fucking morning, goddammit. February 15th, and it is time. Time to get shredded. Let's do this. Okay. Yeah, don't make fun of my uh, silk boxers. I'm on a silk boxers kit. They used to be in back in the day, man. I don't know what happened, but I'm bringing them back, goddammit. They are the shit. Let's get this started. Okay, first things first. All day you may time, God damn it. So, two scoops. And it seems to work out perfect. And I'm doing four scoops a day, so it's not a lot, I don't think. You know, I go through these fucking waters like nothing. Now, I'm sure you guys know all about the fucking product. I'm gonna tell you about it, right? But, you know, for me, getting the nutrients in my system as soon as I wake up, as soon as possible, getting those BCAs in my system is, is very important. Oh my God, sweet tea, this shit is so good. <laughs> taking growth hormone, taking IGF-1, you have to keep your stomach empty for at least an hour after you take the shot. So, I always wanted to come up with something that I don't have to keep my stomach empty. So, with the, these BCAs, there's no sugar, there's no carbs. So, my reasoning for creating this product two and a half years ago was for the simple fact that when taking growth hormone, I could be drinking the BCAs and my body doing its thing and the muscles repairing and, you know, everything going where it needs to go without fucking starving in the morning for an hour after I wake up, which is a fucking pain in the ass. There's nothing, a bodybuilder never wants to be starving. That is just, those two words don't go together. Bodybuilder and starving, never. Always food in your stomach, eating every two hours. You guys know the deal. Okay, so next on the agenda, Vicrin. So there is only two companies that make real IGF-1 that is FDA approved. So when I say real, let me clarify this guys, is when you get growth hormone and you get Pfizer genotropin, you get Lily Humatrope, you get Serrano Serostem, that's real 100% growth hormone that's made in the USA that the FDA checks every single batch and makes sure it is what it's supposed to be. So there is no you know, fucking bullshit, you know, underdose, fucking watered down, fake, whatever. You're getting 100% what you're supposed to be getting, okay? I'm sure everyone already knows that, but some people aren't aware of that shit. So as far as IGF-1, there's only two companies, all right? It's Vicrin and Incrilix. Now, Incrilix is used only for children that are under growth, you know, that, that are born you know, undernourished, undergrowth, and they're, um, the doctor prescribes it to help them catch up in their growth. So that's the only thing Ecrylix could be used for. Getting that stuff is impossible. Impossible. One bottle of Ecrylix is $9,000, but it is 40 micrograms. So it's a pretty, you know, decent sized bottle. Um, now, Vicarin is the best by far. And I'm just telling you that from experience, and um, it's fucking truly amazing. And yes, I finally came across real IGF-1. Go Google this shit and do your fucking research. Don't ever take anyone's word for anything. Find out. Google it, and you will see what I'm saying is 100% truth. So this is my prescription, goddammit. Nice little care package that comes with the IGF-1. And in here we have everything we need, and this is what happens when you get real shit subscribed from a doctor and mailed to your house. It's pretty fucking awesome. So I'm gonna grab up my draw needle, my bacterial static water, goddammit, and I need some insulin syringes. Yes. Now, question: Does anyone actually really use these? <laughs> the alcohol swabs? I have to admit in all my years of taking shit. I've never swabbed my ass with alcohol, but that's not advice I'm giving you. To be safe, you should always use alcohol swabs. But I do draw back on the syringe. That's very fucking important. So many people I know do not do that, and it's, it's really important to not inject this shit in an artery or vein or... So you swirl it, 
very slow. You don't want to shake that shit, you can ruin the whole fucking bottle. It's a lot of fucking money. This shit mixes so quickly. You know, you want to make sure it's completely mixed up. And there should never be bubbles or, you know, fucking shit. It should mix up into looking like clear water. All right, so my dose is going to be 10 micrograms three times a day. Okay, so I put the rest of the IGF-1 in the bottle, goddammit. The rest of what's left in the syringe is going in the fridge. All right, you guys know where this goes. In the butter dish, goddammit. That's where everyone keeps their growth hormone and IGF-1 and HCG is in the butter dish. <laughs> we know how many pro bodybuilders out there uh, fucking were shooting a video and they forgot to edit that shit out. People were like, ah, oh, busted. <laughs> well, I'm not trying to edit this shit out. I'm trying to show you guys the truth, goddammit. What's really going on? So uh, that's, that's the most important thing in my fridge right now is that IGF-1. Okay, a Rimidex. So I'm taking a Rimidex and I'm doing, right now I'm doing one pill every other day. Now that is, it's a pretty high dose actually, believe it or not. You really only need a half a pill every other day. And since a Rimidex is so expensive, I think this bottle was like $290 I want to say. Um, depends if you get generic or you get the name brand. A lot of places don't have the generic. Um, I think this was like 290 something for 30 tabs. So it's it's rather expensive, but it's pharmaceutical. It's in my name, goddammit. Um, I'm 100% legal. Everything I'm fucking putting in my body is 100% legal. I have never in my life been 100% legal. <laughs> so. So I'm going to take that Arimidex, again that's one milligram every other day, is what I'm doing. I'm going to do that for the first two weeks, and then I'm going to uh, go down and do a half a tab every other day. And um, just going to you know, bring my estrogen down, make my physique harder, leaner, hold less water, you guys know the deal. Alright, liver and organ, goddammit. So I am on a cycle, I am taking shit, and... I've been doing steroids for, I want to say like 28 years, is it 28? Yeah. It's been 28 years I've been doing steroids straight. Well, not straight, I take breaks, but you know what I mean. Um, the longest break I ever took in two years, I think, was six months. So liver and organ, three pills, three times a day. And uh, that's the recommended dosage, and that's all you need. You don't need any more than that. Now the liver and organ. Is a product I designed that is specifically for bodybuilders that take steroids. So it protects the liver, the prostate, the heart, the skin, the fucking kidneys, pretty much everything you can think of as far as you know what steroids do negative. So um, I've had liver issues in my past where you know my enzymes, my enzymes got pretty fucking out of whack. So um, this definitely keeps them in a good zone. If you have acne issues from steroids, a lot of people do. This shit helps, man. It's crazy. I've never had acne issues, thank God. But liver and kidneys, very, very important. Drink lots of fucking water and, um, you know, take care of your shit. You know, if you're going to do steroids, you need to do whatever you can to fucking keep those side effects down. You know, do it safely as possible. Smaller dosages, you know, and the Arimidex, you know, people are taking that like it's fucking candy nowadays and Arimidex is something that I very rarely take. I used to only take it for contest prep. Um, I haven't taken that shit in a, in a pretty long time. Um, I decided to take it for this cycle because I feel like my estrogen levels do have a tendency to get a little out of whack and um, the problem is Arimidex lowers your good cholesterol. So that's not a good thing and uh, when I was probably about I would say nine, ten years ago my good cholesterol got down to seven. So that's, that's not good. Um, so that's when I stopped taking Remedex. And it was funny because the doctor I went to at the time, it's the first thing he said. He said, let me ask you a question. You take a Remedex? And I'm like, yeah. He's like, stop. He's like, that's why your good cholesterol's, you know, at such a low number. I was like, what the fuck? Because doctors usually don't know that shit, you know, when it comes to, you know, anabolics and so forth, anti-estrogens. So uh, that, was, that was pretty fucking amazing. And that stopped me from taking it. I stopped taking that shit for a long time and I had all my levels checked uh, before I started the IGF-1 and you know, I had to get checked out and make sure that I'm, my health is good before a doctor sort of scrubbed me a bunch of shit. 
Um, and my good cholesterol is fucking perfect. So, uh, you know, it, stop taking that shit out. So beware, people. Every positive, there's a negative. Every fucking drug you take that does something that you see as a positive is going to have equal much of a negative. So remember that shit. It's everything in the end ends up even. So it does this. It's great, but guess what? It's going to do the same amount negative as it does positive. So you got to fucking, you know, keep track of that shit and, and keep the side effects down. All right. So it is time to throw a shirt on and go do some goddamn cardio. That's what's going to make us shredded. The fucking cardio. Let's do it. All right. First day of cardio. Bike. Starting with the bike. Starting off slow. Gradually working my way up. So today's going to be 20 minutes on the bike. So easy shit. It's going to fly by. All right, so, so much for 20 minutes today. I ended up going uh, 67, 67 minutes so far. So, should I quit or should I go to an even number of 70? <laughs> it's kind of weird, like, just quitting, right? You feel like you gotta end on an even number for some stupid reason? You feel like that? Yeah. <laughs> no, I can quit. Uh, 68 minutes. I'll quit at 68, yeah. Wow, the hardest part is uh, my ass on this fucking seat. <laughs> it's killing me. <laughs> but, uh, you know, the bike is probably the, one of the easiest. But for me, it's the best because uh, my, uh, my knees, you know, rehabilitating my knees is, a uh, uh, bike is definitely the best thing that I could be doing. So stretch time. So I'm gonna stretch. My hamstrings, my lower back, um, calves, hip flexors. So we're gonna start with some hamstring stretches. Now this stretch hits my adductors, my hip flexors, my lower back, and some quad. And uh, a lot of people see me do this and they say it's not a stretch. Well, it's a uh, it's really good stretch and it really, really helps my lower back.
so it is vacuum time. So let's uh, let's get this fucking waist as small as I possibly can. There we go. So, gotta be honest with you guys, I haven't been keeping up on my vacuums, so, uh, you know, me doing this program is going to help me tremendously. So, I am doing this to motivate people and doing this to help people, but I'm also doing it to motivate myself. So, this is going to help me tremendously get back on track, doing what I need to do, you know, and giving it 100%, whatever it takes, and uh, mission, fucking get shredded, get my waist as small as possible. So um, the vacuums I'm gonna be doing three times a day and I'm gonna do three sets of 10 seconds is what I'm starting off with. So I believe that was roughly 10 seconds. So I got two more sets. So uh, let's do this shit. Remember, this shit's gotta hurt. It's gotta fucking hurt for it to work. If it doesn't hurt, you're not doing it right. You need to suck that up as hard as you can, get your waist as small as possible. Envision sucking everything up under your rib cage and tight and holding it the whole time and every second that goes by is fucking pain and uh no pain no gain right all right here we go round two feel how well it's working. It just it makes you feel really good. It makes your waist feel tight. And uh, anyone out there that hasn't tried this shit, you're going to love it. And the results are insane. And, you know, after doing it for, let's uh, say, maybe two to three weeks, you're going to start noticing the difference. Four, five, six weeks, and you keep it up. And I'm telling you, man, the waist is going to get tighter and tighter and tighter. Now, this is not at all to develop the abdominals. This is not an ab exercise. This is strictly learning and teaching and shrinking the waist and getting those muscles, you know, activated and getting that waist tight. And uh, you'll see what I'm saying. You'll notice it, you'll feel it, you'll see the results. But again, it's not an ab exercise. We're not doing this to get six pack, you know, that's not the thing. And everyone knows that, you know, to get abs is all about diet, you know. The leaner you are, the more your abs show. You know, it's not about training them. You can train them every fucking day for 10 years and still not have abs. I'm sure you see those people in the gym that are doing crazy ass fucking abs like every day. And you open it up their shirt and there's not one ab in sight, you know. Women, same thing. I'm sure a lot of people out there can relate. You're doing fucking crunches, you're doing this, you're doing that. Not an ab, not a single ab. Um, so it really is about body fat. You know, your abs are worked indirectly with every exercise you do. Um, so, uh, anyway, back to vacuums. Here we go. Last set, 10 seconds. <sighs> oh. going to be a zero carb after cardio shake. So we're going to go with some almond milk that has no sugar or anything, just healthy fats, some fiber. And then we're going to go with, we usually use almond butter to go with the almond milk, but today we're going to splurge, God damn it, and go with some peanut butter with no salt, 
and no bullshit, just pure organic peanut butter. So let's measure this out. We do two tablespoons. So, yep, there you go. Two tablespoons. Now, I'm making a shake for me and Chanel because we were on the same goddamn diet. It's a wonderful. So, egg white crystals, pure motherfucking egg whites. It's not a powder. It's actually real eggs. No bullshit. So this is the chocolate flavored. So every scoop is one egg white. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then how many do you have? Five. Nine. Ten. Eleven. Twelve and thirteen. Oh, motherfucker! Oh, I'm getting gypped in my last. <laughs> Show the crystals. Show how they're fucking blinging. <laughs> this is not a powder, goddammit. Okay, there we go. We have almond milk, peanut butter, egg white crystals, and ice. So I put eight. Egg whites in mine, Chanel puts five in hers. So, uh, and we have no motherfucking cups. What do you want? Coffee cup? Mm hmm. The fancy gold coffee cup. Where do I go about there? Yep. That's it? Mm hmm. All right. Am I going to be able to pull this shit off, babe? I don't know, I usually do. You do this every <laughs> Usually she makes my shakes in the morning for me. Oh yeah. Look at that shit. Right? So I have a feeling that I have a little bit more egg whites and you have a little less. That's my assumption. Which is fine by me, goddammit. I'm thinking I have like nine or ten and you have like three or four, five maybe. What do you think? Possibly. So this shake, taste-wise, is fucking amazing. We have almond milk, peanut butter, and chocolate with ice. So it is the fucking shit. Okay, first meal of the day. Fucking no-carb fucking shake. It's really not a shake. It's really fucking real food. Fucking fats and protein. So, so while I drink my shake, I'm gonna get a little work done, edit a little bit, let the shake digest, and then get ready and hit the gym. Mmm. Wow. Fucking peanut butter, man. <laughs> peanut butter is the shit. So here we are at the Rolls Royce Bentley dealership. We uh, had to take my my Bentley in to get some shit done, and uh, so we're checking out the showroom. Some good fucking shit. This is the one you like, right, babe? Mm-hmm. It's like a, what would you call that, like a light plum or something? It's just like mauve. <laughs> mauve. Mauve. <laughs> it's marvelous. Okay, we're going to talk about headphones. These are Chanel's Beats. These are, I guess these... I want to say these are kind of like the girls version. Um, I don't know, I guess guys can use them too. They're smaller, they're lighter. Um, these don't cover your ears, you know, so you don't get that uh, noise reduction. It's basically, uh, doesn't cover the ears. So, those are Chanel's. Now these, these are my, well, I actually have like seven pairs of Beats, but these are my favorite ones at the time. You know, the studios, they're like a charcoal silver, they're pretty sick. Um, so those are my current beats. And then these are my Sony's, quite pretty, right? The anodized metal, you know, complete coverage of the same as the beats, you know, completely covered the ears, uh, good noise reduction. So I think I told you guys, but I'm gonna mention again, the funniest fucking, actually fucking bullshit, to be honest with you is, so, I'm at Best Buy and I see the Sonys and I never seen them before and I was like fuck these are pretty sick you know so they have the Beats and they have the Sonys so I was like you know you can listen to them so I put them on 
you know, turn the fucking music on, and these motherfuckers sounded so good. The bass was just like, they were like trembling, boom, 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 like moving. I was like, what the fuck? I was so excited. I'm like, oh my God, these are insane. I put them on, and it was just like crystal clear. The bass was fucking thump. I was like, these are fucking unbelievable. Like, I was so excited. So I fucking, obviously, I bought two pairs. I bought red and I bought blue. Why two? Because I was so excited. I was like, I need two fucking pairs, you know? So I bought red and blue. I brought them home. The next day, I was literally excited to go work out because I had this fucking, just the headphones that just sounded sick. And I don't know about you guys, but music is a must. It's a big motivator. And when I forget my headphones, I'm like, fuck. It's like the end of the world. So... I put them on, I'm at the gym, I'm all excited, I'm gonna train, I think it was back, and I'm like, oh, this is gonna be awesome. I put them on, I, I turn them on, I turn them up, and I'm like, the fuck, how, where's the volume? I'm like hitting the volume, and I'm like, what the fuck's wrong with these? I hit the volume on my phone, and I'm like, what the fuck, they sound like shit, right? I mean, not shit, but nothing like they did at the store. So I'm like, what the fuck is going on? I sat and fucked with them for like 15 minutes, okay? Well, what I realized after analyzing the situation was at Best Buy, I don't know if it's Best Buy or Sony, but what they do is they put, they hook the headphones up to an amplifier. So therefore the headphones play louder and sound better and have more bass because they're hooked up to an amplifier. So then when you listen to them, you're going to fucking buy them. Anyone in the world that listens to these and they sound the way they did, you're going to fucking buy them. And uh, I bought them. Then you take them home and you realize, oh, the headphones aren't, it's like false advertisement. Like, are you fucking kidding me right now? That you guys are, I mean, that's, that's just fucking scamming, you know, just fucking fucking you over. So I bought these headphones and they're shit. I mean, they're not shit. I'm going to be honest with you. They're, they're, they're equivalent to the beats, you know, they're basically, these are basically, I see these as pretty much equal. Uh, if I had to choose, I mean, these are a little more stylish, they're a little more comfortable. I think these are better made. Um, the beats seem to break after, for me, they last like anywhere from two to six weeks and they break. If I drop them, they're done. You know, they're, they're just, in my opinion, they're, they're not made very well. These are a lot more sturdier. I think they're made better. Um, as far as sound, I think they're equal. So, you know, whatever. It's just a visual, pretty much. Now, get rid of these motherfuckers. And let's go with the cheaper headphones. These are the cheap... Well, I guess they're not cheap. These, ones t these, one, these specific ones aren't cheap. But let's go to the Skull Candies, right? Skull Candies are like, you know... When you're in the gym, you know, if you got if you got the beats on, you're fucking cool. You know, you, you got the shit, you're cool. You got $300 headphones on, $350, I think, the studios. So most people aren't wearing the Skull Candies, right? Because they're not cool. Well, the Skull Candies blow these fucking headphones away. Okay, these are the Crusher 2s. And these are insane. I mean, they have an actual bass, you know control where you can actually decide how much bass you want and it's funny because I saw someone else do a review on these that made me go buy them and he's like you know he's like yeah he goes I put it about 30% bass he goes and that's plenty of bass for me and I'm thinking you fucking pussy <laughs> so I put these on man I'm telling you 30% these fuckers are moving they're like moving on your head vibrating and tickling your ears at 30% bass turned all the way up of course I was like, holy fuck. So, Skull Candy Crusher 2s, I'm telling you, man, these, these motherfuckers are awesome. So, I haven't tried the, what are the ones called, babe? Hesh? Hesh 2s? Yeah, sure. I haven't listened to the Hesh 2s, but from all the reviews, these are a little louder, sound a little clearer, and the bass is just incredible. As far as bass, as far as, I've done a lot of research, because headphones, music is fucking important to me when I'm working out. And these have by far the best bass of any headphone out there right now. Um, now, if you're using, you know, a phone, which is, you know, very little wattage being pumped into these headphones. So if you're talking about studio headphones where you got a fucking, you know, an amp and this and that, then I, I have, I can't say these are good. I have no fucking idea, you know. 
Um, I'd probably be leaning in the direction of, uh, what's that company that we have? Sennheiser. Yeah, Sennheiser. That's probably, I mean, I would imagine those are probably one of the best when it comes to the fucking, you know, uh, in the studio and so forth and just clarity and sound. And But if you just want fucking headphones for the gym uh, to go with the phone, then I'm telling you, man, these, these are fucking awesome. I'm so excited because I've only used them a couple times, so they're still kind of new. <laughs> and these, yeah, fuck you. <laughs> You guys all know, man, the Beecher just, it's, it's like 4G Auto rims, you know, it's like, they're the sickest, you know, you gotta have, you know, those on your car, you gotta have these headphones when you're in the gym, it's all just fucking hype and bullshit and marketing, and the pretty little box and the pretty little this and that, and you know, they're, they're you know, it's, it's all bullshit, you know, and they're way overpriced, and they break, and, uh, you know, it's, 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 the Skull Candies, goddammit. All right, it is shake time, God damn it! Real food. So the only carbs I have all day is post-workout. So I do 60 grams of carbs, yams, sweet potatoes, oats, and dried blueberries. Here we go, that's one. Oh, we cannot forget this, God damn it. <laughs> okay, that's one scoop is 20. Two scoops is 40, and three scoops is 60. So 60 grams of carbs, got ice and water. Egg white crystals. That's one egg white. That's two egg whites. Three, four, five, six, and seven, and eight. Eight egg whites. No, we're gonna have to throw a little creatine in there, goddammit. All right, post workout shake. There is nothing better after a workout than this. You have the best complex carbs you could possibly get sweet potatoes, yams, oats, and dry blueberries. And protein is pure egg whites, nothing else. No bullshit, just egg whites. Okay, next is the pre-workout drink. So I start with a bottle of water because it makes life easy. And you know, today I'm gonna do kill it. I alternate these because your body gets used to the same thing, so you gotta mix it up. So today I'm going to do two scoops of kill it. One. Whoa, shit. Two, ah, you know what, I'm gonna be, I might do two and a half. <laughs> two and three fourths. And this is the Great Bubblegum Kill It. This is my favorite. This shit is so fucking good. Great Bubblegum, gonna go with blue raspberry, full as fuck. I'm gonna do two full scoops. And that's my favorite free workout is two scoops of Kill It and two scoops of full as fuck. I threw a little extra Kill It in because I'm feeling like I might need a little bit more of a boost today, which is pretty much what I think every day because I'm out of my fucking mind. All right. Shake that shit up. All right, so I'm gonna throw this shit in the fridge so it's ready to go when I'm ready to go train. Be nice and cold and perfect. Ta-da! Right. Okay, it's time to kill calves. Let's do this shit. First exercise, seated calf extensions, which is my favorite calf exercise. You really have to go all the way and squeeze and hold that muscle and get a full extension. Very important on these. And always stretch and pump the calves in between the exercises. Now next, we have standing calf raises, and this is a pure mass builder. And this is definitely the best thing to put on the mass. And then the third exercise, donkey calf raises. These really stretch the fuck out of those calves, give you a good stretch, a good squeeze, and hits them a little bit differently. So definitely mandatory, throw these things in there, and always squeeze at the top. You have to squeeze that muscle, it won't do it on its own. You gotta contract it, squeeze it, and always go for the pump. Next, seated calf raises. And these are a great mass builder also, and also work the soleus. And you gotta go up, hold that squeeze, 
and rep it out. And this is another one of my favorites. This is the only cab exercise that doesn't affect my knees. So you'll see me doing a lot of these. Definitely a fucking great cab builder. And also, don't forget to stretch and squeeze those calves in between every set. Keep that pump going. Okay, next, shoulders and traps. So shoulders and traps, let's fucking kill that shit. Okay, the first exercise is going to be side dumbbell lateral raises. And these are definitely 100% my favorite shoulder exercise. If you want width in your shoulders to make your waist look smaller, there is no better exercise than these. And I start off with high reps and I just destroy it. I usually do, you know, as many sets as I can. This is definitely the best exercise to give you that width and give the illusion that you have a small waist. So squeeze at the top, pinkies down, thumbs up, and keep that form. All right, next exercise is gonna be rear delts. And I switch this around all the time. Today I'm doing the cables, and you can really get a good squeeze at the end with the cables. It's a lot easier for me to squeeze those rear delts than it is when I'm using dumbbells. So this is a great exercise. Not very many people do this. And next up, we have seated rows to the chin. And this, believe it or not, is rear delts. And every set, I'm squeezing those rear delts, and it does hit a little bit of sides, as you can see, but definitely mostly rears. And another great exercise that I throw in once in a while. And then the next exercise is gonna be upright rows. And these, today I'm just doing them lying down on a seated row with the reverse grip. Now, for me, when I use the reverse grip, I feel a lot more in the traps and less in the delts. It really just gives you a good squeeze in the traps at the top. If you've never done this, you're gonna love it because you get a crazy pump in the traps and a crazy squeeze on top. So this is definitely a great trap builder. All right, always stretch those shoulders in between sets. Very important to stretch. Get fresh blood in the muscle, fresh oxygen, and keep them limber. The last exercise is gonna be shrugs on the Smith machine. And you wanna pull up, get a good squeeze, hold it. When you can't hold it anymore, you just simply rep it out. And just go for reps, go for pump, nonstop, and get those traps fucking burning. That's what it's all about. It's all about the pain. No pain, no gain, goddammit. Okay, we are on our way to the 5% warehouse. Um, what we're doing is we, we get together and we have a taste test uh, with, you know, with the food and uh, our meal prep business. And, you know, we just make sure all the food's on point and, you know, so we, we all sit and try them and talk about them and discuss them and, uh, you know, try the old stuff, make sure everything's, you know, on point. And we do this once a month. So. This might end up being my second meal of the day is tasty new meals. <laughs> so that's fine with me. Well, I haven't eaten yet. I've only had my morning shake. We are pulling in to where the warehouse is and I love the palm trees. So fucking beautiful. So there's a bunch of different random businesses in here. It's a huge complex and it's awesome that we're actually in this complex because it's a really nice place. Our building is is fuck it's it's almost a hundred thousand square feet. I think I've said that before. It's fucking huge. And I got the all day you made, goddammit, everywhere I go. Keep feeding that body 24 hours a day. Because it's repairing 24 hours a day. Hey, what's up? What's going on? Holy shit. What? Did you see did you see Jane? 
pass us? <laughs> nope. <laughs> I'm pretty sure she saw the blur that we were passed by, though. <laughs> she was going the other way. I wonder if she, I wonder if she realized. That we were just going like 120 an hour or some shit? <laughs> Is that what we were doing? Uh, yeah, I think it was like 120. Because uh, <laughs> what? I don't have the registration in the car, and there's more cars on the road. So if there is a cop and you get pulled over, you're like double whammy. Oh man. Okay. Ready for what? <laughs> Having uh, chicken and broccoli, so can't go wrong with that, right? So normally, this meal for five percent is chicken and rice, right? So now that I'm on keto, I need a chicken and broccoli. <laughs> so now we got a chicken and broccoli. So. And it's fucking good. I think broccoli is probably my, one of my favorite vegetables. Broccoli, asparagus, cauliflower, spinach. Brussels sprouts, if they're cooked right, then they're fucking good. Um, about it. So, my weight right now is between 270 and 275. It goes up and down. Um, I'd say I'm closer to 270 to 275 most of the time. And it kind of depends on salt intake and so on and so forth. You guys know all that. So um, so I'm starting off at, um, you know what, actually, I guess I need to fucking weigh myself because last time when I did bigger by the day, I think what I need to do is I need to post a picture from the beginning of the episodes and a picture from the end of the episodes, because to me, it's pretty goddamn fucking obvious how much fucking weight I put on. I mean, my fucking head was square, basically. You know, I had no shape to it. Um, to me, it was it was more than clear, but, you know, everyone, you never weighed yourself. You know, we don't know how much you It's like, oh, really? Really? Jesus Christ, you know? So this time, I will weigh my fucking self so everyone can see, but... You know, people, you can fuck with a scale and make it fucking say other shit, you know? I mean, think about this shit. If, you know, there's so much shit, it's, it's, really, it's really about trusting who the fuck you're watching. If you don't trust who you're watching, why the fuck are you watching that person, you know what I mean? And I know that most people out there that watch me do trust me, and that's why they're watching me. I guess it's probably just the haters talking shit, and that's something they can, you know, let me see, what can I think of? Aha! Uh -huh. You know, come up with some shit, but... But I think I'm gonna go ahead and weigh myself, show you guys the pro, you know progression, how I come down, and uh, I did weigh myself at the end of Bigger by the Day, and it wasn't the very last day. It was like a week after I quit, and so I think I was 311, and I actually ended up getting to 315. So um, I did weigh myself at the end, but not the beginning. But I think it was pretty obvious. So I'll be weighing myself. Uh, I don't know, my, my goal honestly is 240, but I'm going to be straight up with you guys, like, I have fat to lose, and I'm aware of where the fat is, and I can see the fat, and um, slowly the fat's going to go away, and I'm going to get it leaner and leaner, and as I lean out and the fat goes away, I'm going to be happy. Now, when I get to a point where I'm shredded, and... To keep losing weight, I'm going to be sacrificing muscle. That's where I have problems. And that's where, you know, it's going to be hard for me to lose harder and muscle because that's been my whole fucking life. You know, that's, that's what I've been doing my whole life. So to just, you know, change that mentality is pretty fucking impossible, i got to be honest with you guys. You know, it's really hard to, to just, you know, lose harder and muscle. You guys know how hard it is to fucking gain, so... Um, when it gets to that point, you know, I, I really want to and I need to get down lower. 
and getting to 240 I'm going to lose quite a bit of muscle to do that but that is where I need to be um, I think I personally believe I will look better losing a little bit of mass and thickness and become a little more streamlined um, health wise million times better and you know obviously you know you guys know I'm working with the doctor and you know he's already made that more than clear which I've already known my whole life you know that you know the heavier you are the, the heart is in your system a lot of people don't realize that um, a person that weighs 250 that's fat and a person that weighs 250 that's you know a lean bodybuilder that it makes no difference on the heart the heart has to work just as hard so you're not necessarily healthier you know I mean there's positive and negatives but you know as far as the heart's concerned the heart you know doesn't know the difference between you know fat and muscle it's basically just has to pump more blood so uh, something to think about so anyway I'm gonna finish this fucking meal and keep going god damn it let's do this yeah can I place an order for pickup please yeah, you sure can. What, uh, what's the first name I can put it under? Uh, Rich. Is this motherfucker gonna go or what? We've been sitting here for ten. Oh my god. You see that? There was an 18 wheeler two miles away. Hey, there's this nifty little thing on your steering wheel. It's called a horn. Wow. You wanna try to use it? <laughs> wow. And then they go and leave me hanging because they went too slow. Alright. Show these people how to drive. You gotta be careful right here though. Because there's a cop that sits up here to catch people. Every time during traffic, he's right up here. Oh, okay, Mr. Truck. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Nissan Truck, trying to hot rod me. Did that voice again you did? Which one? The one you were, we were pretending was really your real voice. That was <laughs> Fuck. Wait, there's two. <laughs> well, the Are one. we going to Buffalo Wild Wings? Yeah, that, that one? one. Oh my god. I'd love some hot sauce with my wild wings and some blue cheese and ranch dressing. Did you give me carrots and celery? <laughs> Do the other one. Okay, I'd like to have uh, tacos and a mustard with a cheeseburger, french fry, chocolate shake. Okay, you turn it right here, sir. Really? For, for real? Yeah, really. Like, turn right. <laughs> <laughs> That's from Mad TV, right? Ms. Swan. Yeah. I can't remember the little uh, thing. It said 20 minutes. I got here in like two minutes. It is dinner time, god damn it. And I am having wings. And Chanel is having her goddamn salad from Outback. Let's see what I got. This is Buffalo Mild. No, medium. Right? Mm -hmm. Buffalo Medium. And here we have sweet barbecue. Oh yeah. And here we have honey bourbon. Right, babe? Mm-hmm. Oh, these motherfuckers, this isn't extra crispy, is it? Yeah. It is? Mm-hmm. And this one, I believe, is Parmesan Parmesan garlic. Oh yeah. Oh shit, that smells kind of scary. <laughs> That's some fucking strong ass shit. Parmesan garlic. Woo! Grubbin! And five packages of carrots. I love carrots. They only give me one goddamn package of carrots per container. Like, are you kidding me? Per double container. So I had to get extra carrots, extra fucking blue cheese, ready to grub down. This keto diet is so hard to stick to. Look at this. I'm torturing myself with this shit. <laughs> and losing weight, goddammit. Tomorrow I'll wake up and I'll be two pounds down, even with all this sodium. This is like major fucking sodium bloat. So, all right, baby, we gotta find a movie to watch so okay. we can get our grub on. Mm -hmm. It's feeder time, goddammit. Whatever the fuck it takes. Come on, goddammit, get up here. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. All right, let's do this shit. Big squeeze. Every rep.
You ready for round two? You better fucking try to be. You gotta play this jump better than the last one. Alright, let's do it. Well, hang on, I gotta get up here. Oh, you can't just make <laughs> the fuck up. Come on, goddammit. <laughs> What kind of fucking jump is that? Afraid you're gonna hurt me? I'm not a fucking basketball player. You ready? Uh huh. Hold it, squeeze that shit. Yeah! Alright, my calves are fucking on fire. Burning, you ready? Round three, last one. Okay, last one. You ready for me to jump up there now? Yeah, jump the fuck up. Right? <laughs> You've been down for me. Come on. Yeah, that's a little better. <laughs> Alright, here we go. Last set. Big squeeze. my vagina on your belt. Oh shit, baby. Okay, let's talk about the contest. So every single episode of Resurrection by Rich Piana is going to have a contest, all right? And this motherfucker right here, I named him by the way. His name is Tony No Gains. Obviously, you guys know why. So he's going to be in every fucking episode. And it's your job to fucking find out where the fuck he is. So if you're paying fucking attention to the episode, you're going to see his little ass. You're going to go in the comment section and you're just going to simply put the timestamp of where you saw him. And uh, that's it, man. That's all it takes. And I'm going to give him prizes away every fucking episode. So the first episode, yes, this episode, his ass is in the video. So I don't know if you guys saw it or not, but his ass is in there. So the first episode, we're giving away a kill it pre-workout and also a full as fuck. So the prizes are going to change every episode, different shit. So, uh, you know, you can go on the 5% webpage and that's basically where you're going to find out where to mail your address to so we can send you the product, send you your prize. And uh, we're going to announce every time what the new prize is. So his ass will be in every episode. So it's up to you to find his ass. So uh, you know gains, motherfucker. 